In this section, we're going to discuss the methods used to prevent corrosion. There are many ways to reduce the corrosion of metals. Each must be evaluated for practicality, cost, and effectiveness when planning a corrosion reduction program. Things like corrosion resistant metals, barrier coatings, environmental control, and cathodic protection can all be used to prevent, the, prevent or reduce the corrosion of metals. Let's first talk about the use of corrosion resistant metals. Materials such as aluminum, copper, and stainless steel, an alloy consisting mostly of iron, chromium, and nickel, have a high resistance to corrosion. Aluminum, copper, and the chromium and stainless steel combine with oxygen in the air to form oxides on their surface. The corrosion on the surface of these metals forms a thin, hard barrier between the air and the rest of the metal, protecting it from further corrosion. On the other hand, iron combines with oxygen to form iron oxide or rust. Unlike the oxides from chromium and aluminum, iron oxide flakes off and does not protect the iron underneath. The rust will continue until the iron is gone. Stainless steel is not always the best choice for a construction project due to its cost. Aluminum is very malleable, strong for its weight, and a good conductor of electricity. Copper is ductile, malleable, and an excellent conductor of electricity and heat, but is more expensive than aluminum. Because of its lower cost, aluminum was used for a time as household wiring, but aluminum oxide would form between the aluminum wiring and the copper wire from the power company. This would cause a gap in the circuit wiring, causing sparks to move between the two wires that could start fires in the house insulation. Building codes now prohibit aluminum wiring in houses for this reason. Copper combines with the oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydroxide ions from water in the air and the atmosphere via several reactions to eventually form a thin green colored film or patina on the surface. Originally, the Statue of Liberty was reddish brown, the color of copper. The patina protects the underlying copper from corrosion. Let's next discuss barrier coatings. A common way to prevent metals from corrosion is to coat them with the material that prevents the interaction of the environment with the protected metal. Proper coatings are harder to oxidize than the protected metal. The problem is that the coatings typically consist of toxic chemicals and they can wear off over time, exposing the metal to corrosion. Galvanic steel uses a zinc barrier coating that is applied by dipping the steel in molten zinc. This provides a physical barrier between the environment and the steel, protecting it from corrosion. Another way to prevent corrosion is through environmental control. When possible, reduce the effect of the environment on the metal by reducing exposure to rain and seawater, treating water to reduce hardness and alkalinity, reducing exposure to chemicals such as chlorine and oxygen that would react with the material. For water pipes, pipes can't reduce their exposure to the water as that's the purpose of the pipes but the chemistry of the water can be controlled to reduce corrosion. Oil and gas pipes exist in a harmful environment, whether they are buried or exposed to the air. Another protection method is required in this case, cathodic protection. Cathodic protection. Cathodic protection uses an electrochemical reaction to protect metals from galvanic corrosion. The reaction causes electrons to flow from one metal to another. The metal receiving the electrons, or the cathode, is protected, while the metal that gives up the electrons, the sacrificial anode, is consumed. Zinc, aluminum, and magnesium are typically used as anodes. More information on this reaction will be presented in the next topic. The flow of electrons can be stopped by a direct current or DC current generated by a power supply to prevent corrosion of a single metal. 
Let's discuss the sacrificial anode used in cathodic protection in a little more detail. Ship hulls made of steel are in an environment that causes severe corrosion, salt water, barnacles, and extreme temperatures. It is not cost effective to make them out of stainless steel and protective coatings don't last long in that environment. Blocks of zinc, as you can see in the image here, are attached to the hull and corrode, protecting the hull from the galvanic reaction. The zinc is the anode and the ship's hull is the cathode. The blocks have to be replaced frequently as they are consumed. Cathodic protection is also used in pipelines. Pipelines carrying oil and gas are subject to extreme weather that encourage corrosion and protective coatings often fail or are damaged. Sacrificial anodes are not always able to be installed to protect the entire pipe run. A DC power supply supplies a current to prevent galvanic corrosion at key spots. You can see that in the image here. The flow of electrons increases the cathodic reaction in the metal, thus reducing the anodic reaction, which destroys the metal.